United Church of Christ. Or no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We are an open and affirming congregation that welcomes all into the Lord's house as God has welcomed us, regardless of sexual orientation or identity. Happy Easter, everyone. Glad to be here. Uh, your announcements are on the back of the bulletin and on the screen. Yeah, if you have any questions, uh, you can get with me or uh, one of our other deacons after the service, and we can elaborate on uh, any of the announcements that you need elaborating. Elaborate. Um, for our prayer requests, uh, we hold in prayer today Galen Stokes, who is in the hospital, uh, the Babcock family for the loss of a sister. Uh, prayers for Brian Parrish, our mission co-worker, and the Church of Christ in Congo, Africa, with whom they serve. He writes that we worship the God who rolled away the stone from the tomb the first Easter. We each have a stone or stones in our lives. In Congo, the stone of famine is affecting a quarter of the population. The stone of violence by groups with weapons has caused over 5 million people to be displaced. More than 2,500 civilians were killed last year. We pray to God to roll away the stone of despair so that there can be hope. Pray to God to come and roll away the stones that close our hearts. And we continue to hold in prayer the people of Ukraine and all of the devastation that continues to go on there. Um, praying that that will come to an end and the loss of family members and, and people that suffered there in that country has been extraordinary. Um, if you have any other additional prayer requests, there will be a part in the pastoral prayer uh, where you will be able to lift up uh, those names either out loud or silently in our hearts. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you for the resurrection and new life that you give us Lord, we pray that you would give us eyes to see, as Mary did, what resurrection is really all about. Help us to move away those stones so that we can bring about the transformed kingdom that we always pray for. Lord, we lift up to you the people in Ukraine, those who have lost loved ones and their families. Lord, we pray for world leaders to bring about peace there in that country. And we pray that your spirit of peace and comfort would be with those who have lost loved ones. Lord, we pray for the Galen Stokes family. And we pray for the Babcock family who's recently lost a sister. What a terrible time to lose a loved one. We pray that you would give them your assurance and peace. And Lord, we pray for those in Congo as they continue to try to move away those stones of despair and injustice as your angels did for Jesus on that first Easter Sunday. And now in a moment of silence, I would invite those who are here with us to say out loud the names of those who are on their prayers this day, either silently in their hearts or out loud. God, you are holy. Robinson family. Bill Washington.
for the sins we made, so that we do. Okay, so white. Can we find a white one? Now, white is for the grace that God gave us. Okay, thank you. Um, purple. Can you find a purple one? The purple's the best one, right? Yeah. So the purple is for the hours of sorrow. Okay, so paint. Can we find paint? And paint is for a new tomorrow. So may every day be Easter in your heart. May the joy you feel on Easter morning be the joy of each day of your life. So each one of these colors reminds us of God and Jesus and the new life we have in Easter. That's fine. Dear God, we thank you for um, our youth and we ask that you be with them. Uh, and may always be able to um, receive uh, your new life on Easter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so now you can all go enjoy your jelly beans.
Our second uh, scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Hear these words. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scriptures, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting with her body of Jesus, sitting with the body of Jesus, where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for, supposing him to be the gardener? She said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the good news of Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. This morning, as we begin the Easter season, I would like to invite you to begin a journey with the disciples as they follow and encounter Jesus beyond the tomb. What does it mean to follow Jesus beyond the tomb? What does it mean to be a part of the new resurrected life that Jesus wants us to participate in. I think there are times that we all have in our lives where we have felt like we were living inside of a tomb. There are many reasons as to why we may find or feel ourselves that we are living in this place. It may be because of addiction, the loss of a job, or like Mary in our scripture reading, the loss of a loved one. Mary of Magdalene is the first disciple of Jesus in the Gospel of John who experiences Jesus outside of the tomb and ultimately decides to follow him in this new resurrected life. What can we learn from her? 
about the resurrected life in Christ that Christ offers all of us. The first thing that we learn is that resurrection does not begin with hallelujahs and praises to the Lord. Easter begins for Mary as a time of disorientation and confusion. She is the first disciple to arrive at the tomb, and she comes to the tomb in the dark. In the Gospel of John, light and darkness are used as metaphors to describe the mood of the characters that are encountering Jesus in this Gospel. When she arrives at the tomb and notices that the stone has been rolled away, her first impression is not that Jesus has been raised from the dead. She goes to the disciples and she says to them, somebody has taken the body. I know someone has stole the body. The disciples that go to the empty tomb and see the linen wrappings are not sure what to make of all of this either. There's only one disciple that actually believes, and that is the unnamed disciple in the Gospel of John, who's known as the beloved disciple. The text says the disciples simply left and went back home. Their first consensus about what had happened wasn't that Jesus had been raised from the dead. It says that they're not, they just don't know. The text says that they did not yet understand the scriptures. Before resurrection can become a reality in our lives, we have to go through this period of disorientation and confusion. This has been true in my experience. And the reason we have to do this is because our imaginations are not big enough to contain the awesome scope of what resurrection is all about. Resurrection is not simply a one-time event that takes place on Easter Sunday. Resurrection, the Easter season, goes on for 50 days all the way up to its climax at Pentecost. It is a journey, a process of discovery and renewal. I can think of many times in my own life where I have had to go through confusion, doubt, and disorientation like Mary because I couldn't see and experience the resurrecting promises that God and Jesus offer us. The second lesson that we learn from Mary is that being a disciple of Jesus beyond the tomb often means that there will be times when we are alone, as the only one looking for Jesus, trying to find hope in the midst of hopelessness and darkness. All of the disciples leave Mary to go back home, but Mary stays weeping outside of the tomb, hoping against hope that she will find out what is going on. She takes another look inside of the tomb, and she sees two angels sitting where Jesus' body had been laying. They say to her, Why are you weeping? She repeats what she had told to the disciples earlier, wanting to know who has taken Jesus' body. Even with the angels there, she still doesn't understand what is going on. She still can only understand this event in a rational way. Her mind hasn't been expanded yet into all of the awesome possibilities of God. She turns and sees a man who appears to be the gardener. He asks her about why she is crying. She continues to ask, where have you taken the body? When the man who appears to be the partner, though, responds to her by name, she realizes that it is Jesus. Jesus responds to her, do not hold on to me. 
The third lesson that we learned from Mary about resurrection is that we have to let go of all that we have known from the past to embrace the new life that God is calling us to walk into. We have to have our minds stretched enough to see things in a new way. Mary's resurrection experience concludes with Jesus commissioning her to announce the good news to the other disciples. That he is ascending to his father and her father, to his God and her God. <coughs> the fourth lesson is that we learn from Mary is that we are called to announce and proclaim the resurrection of Jesus. We are called to share the good news. Easter reminds us of that. God has an assignment for us, a job for us to do as the church, which is to announce the resurrection of the Lord and the good news of new life in Christ. And Mary is the first person that tells us that. She is to go and preach. Our scripture reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians gives us the overall significance of this event. While we've already celebrated Good Friday, I find it impossible to separate Easter from Good Friday. You can't talk about Easter with all, without also mentioning Good Friday. So in Paul's letter, he talks about a new Adam, which is Jesus. And what connects our two scripture readings together so well is that in the gospel reading, Mary confuses Jesus for the gardener. Now in the very first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve are in a garden. They are the first gardeners. Jesus will find himself in the garden of Gethsemane, struggling with his disciples to make sure they stay awake. And he will struggle with God, asking whether the cup will pass from him. The garden is where it all begins. It is where death and sin become a reality. There's struggle. But Jesus is returning as the new Adam to garden the way it was always meant to be. And Jesus is another type of Adam who is undoing everything that has happened before with sin and death, the whole history of humankind. The resurrection is the beginning of a new creation, a new genesis. The church's way of talking about this is recapitulation, which simply means a undoing, a redoing of humanity and all of creation. On this Easter Sunday, let us bear witness to the resurrection of Jesus and announce that God is not finished with us either. Even though Easter lasts for 50 days, resurrection is still taking place throughout history. And time, even up to this present moment, at Mayflower Congregational United Church of Christ, resurrection is still ongoing. May our minds be opened and our imaginations expanded so that we can see the resurrection that God has in store for us. Amen.
Now let us hear these words for our invitation to offering. The gifts that we bring to this community compound and create resurrection power, helping us to awaken wholeness in the broken, strength in the weakened, and liberation for all living in the midst of injustice. Let us share our generosity with each other and the community. Let us begin this morning's offering. Thank you. 
that uh, two combined services are Monday Thursday service that we joined writing at, and there was a mixture of singing, and everyone really brought the talents. And then our Good Friday service, uh, we not only had writing, but we also had the other first congregational church here, probably the best well attended Good Friday service that I've been to in quite a long time. But I just want to thank everybody for. Uh, working together to bring together all the beautiful talent that was there and to putting together those two extraordinary services. Thank you very much. Here are these words for our closing benediction. As we go forth, may you be reminded of the creating, creative, renewing energy of God. May you be witnesses of the wonders of God's work in the world through Jesus Christ, may you be reminded of the possibilities of victory and glory amidst death and despair, and may God be gracious to you and give you peace.